Hello, this is Anke for Goldie Cameron. I have the pleasure to speak to Nicholas for the great. I have to say I have a love-hate relationship with your character. <laughs> That's uh, good. Every, yes, it, it's a good thing, exactly, because every time I think, ooh, he's actually getting better and nicer, and then boom, he does something. I was like, but in, in that regards, have you learned something about what makes, you know, by being a bad leader in this show, have you learned something about what makes a good leader in this world today? I think it's very difficult to be a good or bad leader. And that's what you see within the show. And that's why it's interesting to look at it through that microscope of history and the mirror image of, you know, a lot of people look at the leaders we have now and you kind of, it's a bit of a mess, but then you kind of, from slightly inhabiting one, you kind of see through Tony's writing, the people that try and sway his opinion and how they try and manipulate him for their whims and wants. Um, and that's the thing about Peter. He doesn't, he doesn't want to be a ruler. He kind of got born into it, finds the job a little bit of a nuisance. He's trying to have fun himself just in life as a young man and then gets thrown into this position that he doesn't find any re rewarding at all. So um, it's interesting because also at times, the fact that he's a terrible leader kind of accidentally means that he's almost a good leader as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's kind of a little bit of tit for tat in that sense. And I think you even see that from um, um, Catherine's point of view, Elle Fanning's character's uh, uh, viewpoint at times, because she, you know, she kind of gets everything she wants halfway through the season almost, where it looks like she's going to get, you know, get power, become the ruler. And then she realizes that she's not ready and she's not prepared for it. And it's kind of a lot more than she had anticipated. Mm -hmm. So since you're playing such a crazy character, what's the craziest thing you have done ever in your life? The craziest thing I've crazy, ever done in my like life. Really crazy. I don't. I mean, they kind of feel crazy at the time, I suppose. In hindsight, I mean, I did a I did a skydive dressed in a in a tiger print onesie in Africa. That felt that felt kind of wild at the time. I like adventures, so I, I, I doing that. I've I've done like I, I rode a miniature motorbike a kind of 50cc miniature motorbike across Morocco. Um, uh, me and a couple of friends wrote, drove a rickshaw across <laughs> India. So we kind of do adventurous things. They're not, they're not crazy, they're fun. You know, they're kind of what make you feel most alive, I guess. Well, if this is ever over and one day it will be, I know who, with whom I'm going to go on a vacation next. So yeah, come, we'll go on an adventure trip together. But talk a little bit about, um, I think what the funniest parts of these show, the show is also that the, there are certain duties that come with being an emperor, including, you know, producing an heir. So these uh, dutiful sex scenes that you have, how much fun are they um, or are they actually very stressful? Uh, the dutiful sex scenes, uh, <laughs> all the sex scenes are very funny because they kind of work, they're working on two levels. There's obviously the physical of what's happening in that moment, but for Peter and Catherine particularly, they're kind of most of the time in completely different headspaces. He's he's worried about getting stung by a bee that's in the room, or there's other people in the room making sure they conceive because it's such a big business that they produce an air. Um, so they're actually really funny scenes to write, particularly with that witty dialogue that that Tony comes up with. So it's um the most difficult thing is kind of <laughs> multitasking, I would say, keeping the comedy flowing whilst managing to keep the rhythm going. Oh, I, I rhymed. Actually, the, another fun part of the show is that it's actually not really based on historical facts, but uh, and, and that gives you actually a lot of freedom. But are you a big history buff? Did you know a lot about Peter the not so great? <laughs> um, you know what? I, I do love history. I wasn't um, into history at school that much. Um, but now the more the, the more historical pieces I've performed in, I, I, I really love delving into the history of the times and the characters and the people that existed and, and kind of using it um, to get into a character. But at the same time with this, I knew that from working on The Favourite that Tony's writing doesn't necessarily want or need you to do that. And that was the same thing that Yorgos kind of never prepared us to, to really try and be ghosts of these real people. It's kind of more, you know, we'll draw inspiration from these historical facts that are occasionally sometimes true, but we'll create our own story from them. So. Um, to be honest with you, research-wise for this, I, I didn't really do much in terms of no, learning about the real Peter. I took more from on the page in the script. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. I, I realized I didn't curtsy when I said, hello, your majesty, so I'm curtsying now. Thank you, finally. <laughs> thank you so much and uh, be well. Hey, very good to see you. You too, take care. See you.
Russia must be saved, and I with it. I don't want to kill you. You're not a bad person. I could kill you. You are a bad person. <laughs> You're funny. Treason is what we're discussing here. It's a dangerous game. Do not worry. All is bliss in the court of Catherine the Great. Touche. Do you mean touche?